Before we start the video, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Jeremiah, the designer of my new profile picture and channel art. You can find Jeremiah on YouTube under the name Jeremiah Skywalker or click the link down in the description. Thank you, Jeremiah, and thank you to all of you for subscribing. That's enough of that. Time to nitpick. Maybe if you were the real Pharaoh, which you're not. Theme. We are live from Paris. Ah! Ladybug in action. How does she even have the textbook? Her bag always disappears when she transforms, so why wouldn't the book? Why didn't she put it down once she realized it didn't disappear? How was she holding it up until now? Last I checked, her suit doesn't have pockets. What are the chances that in all of Paris, Ladybug happens to drop her textbook at the exact time and place where Alia is live streaming? Phew, that was a lot and I'm too lazy to count, so I guess uh, five cents for you. What you got here is no ordinary book. It's a 10th grade history book. Could our very own Ladybug be a high school student? Wait, they're in 10th grade? How old are 10th graders? Let me see. Huh. Wait, hold on. Um, the math ain't mathin'. Maybe I'm not cut out for this whole ladybug thing. You are the chosen one, Marinette. It will all work out. Trust me. The chosen one cliche especially doesn't make sense here when literally anybody could wear the miraculous, including the villain. Because our school is the only school that uses that book. Well, that's inconveniently convenient. You'd think Marinette might have known about that and maybe, I don't know, not carried it around as Ladybug? This man was running straight forward, eyes up front, and had this entire hallway to go around or stop. He 100% ran into them on purpose. If the show wants us to believe otherwise, they should have animated it better. You're in the same grade as Alex, right? I'm her older brother, Jaleel Kubdow. Somehow he recognizes them, but they have no clue who he is. I can't think of any non-creepy scenario where this would be the case. Why is he watching the same video on all three screens? It's not like he can look at all three at the same time. There, as you know, the one with the scepter is Tutankhamun the first. There are exactly 100 mummies beside them. She died several years before him. Yes, I know all that. I'm the director of this exhibition, remember? Clunky exposition is forced and, well, clunky. I just need to get my hands on Tutankhamun's scepter. Don't even think of touching that scepter. It's a priceless historical object, not a toy. Mr. Kubdel is uncharacteristically mean to his son in order to further the plot. That, or Alex is his favorite child. Speaking of which, why did he give the so-called family heirloom to her and not her brother? They're called heirlooms because they generally pass to the heir of the family, which traditionally is the oldest male child, neither of which applies to Alex. What if Tutankhamun had found out how to bring people back to life? Get your head out of those papyrus scrolls and focus on the real world. This one. This coming from a man who gave his daughter a magical watch and receives letters from the past. Admittedly, I don't know when that started, but in a world full of superheroes and villains, it's still hypocritical. Let's talk about Mr. Exposition's plan. He's going to sacrifice someone who apparently must have a pure soul. I must give him something in return. A pure soul. Dude. In order to resurrect someone, although he doesn't specify who. How is the focus of this conversation on the scepter and not the fact that he wants to murder someone? Look closely! It is in there. I really don't understand why Tiki doesn't just tell Marinette what she wants her to see. If Mr. Exposition hadn't been at the museum at the right time, this would have been a wasted trip, and there's no way she knew he would be there. Ladybug waved at me! Did she really just- Alia, show some situational awareness and stop making Ladybug's job harder by constantly getting in the way. Enjoy your coffin! It's called a sarcophagus, you poser. I'm way more powerful than you are. He's right. I mean, Ladybug and Cat Noir can't teleport like he just did. How are we gonna find them? Lily has got a live stream on her blog. This would be a pretty smart plan if Pharaoh didn't just stop right outside the Louvre. But since he does, this plot point is pretty much useless. You look so much like her. This ancient Egyptian is wearing modern glasses. <laughs> oh no, I ran right into one of those time bubbles. <sighs> This is Alka! I just found out I'm the sacrificial offering to the sun god! Now, I'm not exactly an expert on magical time warps, but I'm pretty certain Ladybug shouldn't be able to access Alia's livestream from inside of it. That aside, no 
Duh, Alia. Why else would he kidnap you? You were there during the exposition dump. Who's that goddess chick with the black spots? Ladybug, my sworn enemy. Why hasn't anyone noticed this before? Perhaps they didn't know what it meant until Ladybug appeared, but surely it would have been discovered since then. You don't even need to read hieroglyphics to know who that is. And why didn't Mr. Exposition bring this up with his dad earlier? It might have helped legitimize his claims that the spell was real, seeing as they know Ladybug is real now, and this papyrus predated her arrival. My nemesis may have kept me from carrying out my ritual 5,000 years before. I have even more questions now. That's Tiki right there. If Mr. Exposition can read this, does that mean that he knows about the Kwamis? Why was he so focused on the spell when the Papyrus reveals secret knowledge about an actual superhero? And surely he realized Ladybug would have tried to stop him from performing the ritual even if he wasn't akumatized. It makes no logical sense, but I'm going to stop talking about it before my head explodes. Ladybug 5,000 years ago! Well, you don't look a day over 3,000. Who on earth would believe this is the same Ladybug as this one? Hawkmoth is always shouting about the miraculous, so they should realize that the superpowers come from them and can be passed around. Even if they don't realize that yet, Cat Noir definitely shouldn't believe this, as he knows she was a rookie when they first met. Also, later, when everyone absolutely knows Ladybug is just the title for any regular chick who wears the Ladybug miraculous, why doesn't anybody remember this incident and make the connection that Ladybug is a high school student? At the very least, Alia should, since she works closely with the Miraculouses and is obsessed with Ladybug. Hey, how come Cat Noir never visited ancient Egypt? Oh, sacred Ra, god of the sun. Can ancient Egyptian spells be translated into English and still work as intended? Thanks for saving my butt! Alia's fingers are definitely covering any type of camera this phone has. The number of mummies Pharaoh has under his command varies drastically for the rest of the episode. That's our last hope. <laughs> All right. You got me. Take us in back, you sassy kitty. Although, those mummies are just standing there and not attacking, so I'm gonna need to add it right back. Alia survives this. Speaking of which, if she could survive this fall the entire time, why didn't she just jump off earlier? She clearly wasn't frozen or anything. If he doesn't need to put the offering at the base of the light beam, why doesn't he just fly up and toss her into the darkness himself? Seems a lot faster to me. You want my miraculous? Go get it! Get it! Hawkmaw should know that these are fake. He has a miraculous. He knows that you detransform when you take them off. This show can't be consistent to save its life. I have so many questions about this ritual. Is it actually magic from Egyptian gods and only stopped once the mummies were no longer present, or was this whole thing powered by Hawk Moth's magic? If it's the latter, does that mean King Tutankhamun was akumatized? But the biggest question I have is, would it have worked? I mean, it probably would have succeeded in killing Alia, but would it have brought back Nefertiti? You'd think Hawk Moth would be far more interested in this magic due to his as-of-yet secret motives, but he isn't. My greatest concern is the possibility that he had the power to resurrect Emily this entire time and just never thought about it. It's funny how this one episode has the potential to break the entire show. Much like the time travel episode in season How old are you, really? Um, much older than a high school student, that's for sure. Lying. If it hadn't been for you, I'd never have found out that Ladybug is at least 5,000 years old. What was she doing with that 10th grade history textbook? Uh, Except literally only your school uses those textbooks. Either she stole it from one of your classmates, or she attends there. Either way, Alia should still be suspicious. Hey, Ladybug's textbook, it's gone! Why would someone steal the book unless it was important in some way? Come on, Alia, use your brain. You could use that one. I don't get it. I know I'm not 5,000 years old, so who exactly was that ladybug in the papyrus? <laughs> you serious?